we have our composite structure all set up in ACP. So I can go back to Workbench. I'm going to right click and I'm going to update my ACP system. So that's just finalizing all the data and then I can transfer it through to a static structural system. So I've just dropped that in. I'm going to then drag and drop my ACP setup onto the model. It's going to ask me whether I want shell or solid. I definitely want shell. I'll create that connection and now I can open Ansys Mechanical. There we go, so our mesh has followed through the whole time and we have our imported plies, so all that information is, in, is uh, available to look at. We can expand it right down to get to each individual ply. So this is the top mould, ply layer 6, and we can visualise the, the fabric shape, but we can also visualise, just again, the fibre orientations. So we can see that the fibre orientation is going across our bonnet. Uh, we can take that off. And we can also look at the ply normal, so the thickness direction. Everything's facing inwards, as we specified. So we're, we're preserving the external surfaces of our structure for aerodynamic reasons. So to apply some loading, I mentioned earlier that I wanted to do a torsional test of my of, of my chassis, so I'm going to fix the rear uh, bulkhead by the loading points, and then I'm going to twist twist my chassis via by the suspension attachments. So to do that, I'm going to add a fixed support, scope that to my attachment points at the back. and then I'm going to insert two remote displacements. So I'm going to specify that and then I'm going to apply it to my suspension mounting points and I'm going to displace it 40 millimeters in the vertical direction. And you can see that the point at which that's acting is in line with the surface and that's not what we want right now. So I chose a remote displacement because I can actually make this force act at a different location. So earlier I specified the locations of my wheel hubs. So if I make my load act through this location, I'm going to get that coupling moment around my chassis that will induce the torque. So in my remote displacement, I don't want it to be based around the global coordinate system. I want it to be around the wheel hub and then I'll set the location to be exactly on the wheel hub. So you can now see that it does have some type of moment arm, it's going to induce that torque. Another, A better way to visualise this is to visualise the connections between the chassis and the location where I'm, I'm applying my loading and I can do that by promoting this to a remote point and then visualizing these remote points. So you can see that these rigid beams are connecting my structure to the wheel hub, essentially like the suspension would be attaching my, my chassis to my wheel. So this would be a really efficient way of, of capturing that type of torque moment around, uh, talk about my chassis. I'm going to quickly repeat that for the other side. Remote displacement again. Coordinate system will be this wheel. I'll apply it to my sur surface patches. Location will be 0, 0, 0. And I want 40 millimeters again. Let's promote that to remote point just to visualize again. So I'm pushing down on one side, pulling up on the other. I'm going to be twisting my chassis and fixing it at the back. So let's go ahead and solve this model and see what type of deformations, stress distribution, and also predict if we're going to have any failure under this loading. So 
So that's the simulation complete. Let's insert a couple of result results. First one will be just an overall deformation. See what's going on. Are we getting the correct so sort of loading? To do the true scale, just visualize it. Let's, say, let's bump that scale up a bit. So we're twisting our structure around those suspension points. Let's look at the stress distribution. And let's look at, rather than a single ply, let's look at all plies. So this will show me the critical layer. So we do have stresses up to 487 megapascals. It's not actually at the location of, of loading. It's at one of the corners of the cockpit opening. And that's why I applied a reinforcement because these corners are going to be real stress concentrations. So we needed that little extra thickness there to try and reinforce our structure. Let's now check using a composite failure tool whether we're experiencing failure under this loading. So we have all the different models that we could choose from. I'm going to go with a really couple of basic ones. Just use the maximum strain, maximum stress. So we have numbers that are in inherent in our material that if they go above this magnitude of loading, we're going to experience failure. So some of the details of these models are in here, but I'm just going to generate the inverse reserve factor. So this can take a little bit just because it needs to calculate a lot of different iterations of this, this failure model for each element. So we'll let it go through. Alright, so we've got a couple of hotspots of damage uh, on the location where we're actually attaching the loads, obviously. And then we've also got a couple of hotspots around the cockpit opening again. Also, the magnitude, we can see here, the maximum inverse reserve factor is actually above 1, so we are experiencing failure. We would be experiencing failure under this type of loading. Whether we need to go back and redesign our, our structure to bring this uh, reserve factor down to a safe level, um, that would be a, a, another iteration of our design. So let's look at some of these hotspots and try and understand what type of failure we could be expecting in that area. So I turned it off before, but I'm going to show critical failure mode. So it's going to bring up all these little notations. So at this hotspot, at the, the suspension attachment, we can see that we have, so S is for the maximum stress model. One is the principal direction, compression for C. So we're having a, a compressive failure in this area because we're pulling it across, uh, because we're we're applying the loading through a very concentrated little patch. So we can also visualize which layer is critical. So I'll zoom in again. It's getting a bit hard to read. So in ply number two, which is ply number two? So that would be. Oh, that's hard. So that would be the face sheet, the composite face sheet of the lower half. So if we were to add another layer in this in this uh, ply group, we might be able to reduce the inverse reserve factor at that point. We've also got failure predicted at, at, at this corner. That is a, so S again for the maximum stress and 1, 2 is going to be a shear failure around the, the the one two principal directions so and that's apply uh, that's uh, occurring in the twelfth ply so this information is really good to go and then go back into our composite our layup definition maybe just increase the thickness here add another layer there maybe we need to reorientate a specific ply so that we can better capture the load around these locations so that's a really basic type of analysis of our structure. Oh, one more thing. So I talked about, so we know we kind of need to improve this design from a safety perspective, but let's have a look at just how rigid it is. The way that we would do that 
is to, to look at creating a force reaction from uh, our, our fixed location. So how much force did we have to apply to induce that torque? So this information here, we have a, a total force reaction of 200, 255 newtons at this location. We can apply that into a, a torsional rigidity equation and understand how our structure is from a, a, a rigidity perspective. Okay, so that's a really quick analysis of our composite structure. We might want to go to some more layers of detail. We might want to repeat design iterations to improve it, make it safer. But that would be the process that you would need to go from your initial CAD geometry, uh, layup definition, through to analysis and post-processing for a basic composite structure. So those are the key steps. I think you would be able to then go through and do it with your material, your your structure with not too much difficulty.